Hi everyone, in this tutorial we're going to look at two different ways that you can use to create DNA strands in Maya. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can visualize this. One of the ways we're going to look at is creating this ribbon-like structure. And another is using more of this molecule-based structure. So let's start in a blank scene in Maya and create a sphere on our grid. We want to scale this down and then duplicate it by clicking Ctrl D on the keyboard and then separating both of these spheres. I'm going to use my grid just to make sure that everything's aligned properly. So moving that one there and then moving this one over here. Back in the perspective view, I'm going to create a cylinder and scale it down and then scale it up on the y-axis. Now you have some options for how you want this to display. You can either have this part completely connected or you can do it with separate base pairs. And if you want a flashback to biology at high school, then here's a little refresher. And you can also at this point color code everything if you want. I'm not going to cover any shading in this. It's just modeling the structure itself. With our cylinder, we want to rotate it 90 degrees. And in our channel box, we can make sure of this by putting 90 degrees into the rotate value. Now we want to push this up against the end of one of our spheres. And I'm going to scale it down slightly more. And then I'm going to duplicate this and then do the same to the other side. I'm just using top view to make sure that I'm happy with that gap and it's actually looking not too bad. Now going back to this part we want to create two more spheres, one here going in this direction and one here in that direction. So pressing Control D to duplicate and then just moving it slightly for now and scaling it down a little bit. I'm going to just place this so it's just about 45 degrees and make sure it's centered up in line with the other sphere. Now that we've done this, we want to duplicate this one as well and then move it down and then move it to the other side and then align it again. There, now that that's done, what we want to do is to select all of our objects and go to Mesh and Combine. And then select this and then go to Edit, Delete by Type, History, and then we want to go to Modify Freeze Transformations. Select your object and on the first frame, create a keyframe. I'm using S shortcut on my keyboard to do this. And then I'm moving on to about 20 frames and what we want to do is move this upwards and then we want to rotate it and then using the channel box again make sure that it's rotating 360 degrees and then create another keyframe. This doesn't work when you press S on your keyboard at this stage for some reason so I'm going to go to animation and click on the keyframe icon. Now you can see that our object is going upwards and spiraling around as it's doing so. So with this still selected, we want to go to the animation workspace and then we want to go to visualize, create animation snapshot and open up the options box. You want to make sure that your start time is at one frame and your end time is wherever you put your second keyframe. So mine's at 20 and I'm going to put the increment to one for now. And that's actually worked out quite well. Now I'm quite happy with how this has turned out and with the alignment of these balls. If you're not happy with them, you can go back and hide your snapshot and you can move these around slightly by going into the face mode and selecting each sphere and moving it around. So I'm just going to show these again by hitting Shift and H. So I think with this one, my problem is that my increment's just a little bit off. So what I'm going to do is just delete my snapshot, go back into my sphere and then go to create animation snapshot again. 
and I think mine looks best about 1.25. What we want to do is hide our initial object. And then you can see here that everything kind of bunches up at the ends. And a way to work on this is to select your original object and then go into the graph editor by going to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. Select your rotate attribute and select all. And then you can see that it's added an automatic bezier. And what we can do here is adjust our animation. So what I'm going to do is to select both of my keyframes and hit this option, which has flattened out both of my keyframes. I'm selecting this and holding down on my middle mouse button by clicking on my scrolling wheel on my mouse. And then just adjusting these slightly until I'm happy with the result. Now what I want to do is hide my initial object by pressing Ctrl H. Now that I've done that, I think I actually want to move this up slightly. So on your final keyframe, select your object and then move it up slightly. And that's looking quite a bit better. I'm going to hide this now. And what I want to do is just delete the top one and the bottom one. And I'm just going to adjust these slightly. You can play around with your graph editor a bit more to get a better result. But sometimes for the sake of speed, it's just easier to go in and do it manually. And now that we've got that, I'm going to select my snapshot group and I'm going to go to edit, ungroup. And now that I'm happy with my shape, I'm going to go to modeling, mesh and combine. Combine them all into a new shape. And I'm going to go and delete my history as well by going to edit, delete by type, history. And then I'm just going to control D and move this upwards and then just align, align my objects together. And you can do this as many times as you like to make it as long as you want. And then once again, select all your mesh and then go to combine. There we go, that's our first method. You'll be happy to know that the second method is actually even easier than this. And what we want to do is create a cube on our scene. And I'm going to scale this up on the Y axis and scale it down on the X axis to make it a nice flat ribbon shape. There we go, I'm also going to rotate this around 90 degrees. We want to select our cube and we want to add some subdivisions to this. The so subdivision height, let's put that at 5. And then on the height, let's try that at 50. And then the depth, put that at 10. Now we want to duplicate this and then move it down our grid. I actually think these are both just a little bit thick, so I'm just going to scale them down a little bit. And same way as before, we're going to create a cylinder on our scene, scale it down, and then scale it up on the y-axis. For this one, I'm just going to do a merge bridge for this one, instead of keeping the separate base pairs. And then using all of our views, we're just going to make sure that this is aligned all nicely. I'm going to just start laddering this up using the middle of each of these squares on the grid. Now that we've got our shape, we want to select it and then in the modeling menu go to deform, nonlinear and twist. You can see that this has created a twist handle. If we go into the attribute editor and go to twist one, you can set the end angle. Now for this, we want to set this to a negative value, so negative 800. Doing the negative value will make sure that this is going to spiral in a clockwise direction, which is correct for DNA strands. If you do it the other way, it becomes incorrect. And that's about it. When you're happy with your shape, select it delete the history and freeze the transformations. 
and that's two ways to create DNA really quickly in Maya. I'm going to create part two of this tutorial, which is going to look at how to rig these up so that you can start animating them and bending them around. So make sure that you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on that tutorial. Please give any feedback in the comments below and also have a look for me on Patreon. I've set up a Patreon because I want to keep doing these tutorials and it's really hard to prioritize them with other freelance projects I've got going on as I'm just doing them for free in my spare time. I'm creating these videos because I'm trying to make all the tutorials that I wish that I had when I was starting out in scientific animation. So if you'd like to support me on this journey, then please follow the link and go to my Patreon page and pledge as little as $1 per thing. I've not got many things going up at the moment, it's maybe about one a month. So just $1 a month and it'll help me be able to dedicate more time to creating content like this. Thank you so much and have fun.